Thanks for watching my video. If you like it, hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, this is a dream bike to work on. This is the MV Agusta F4-1000R. Uh, we're going to put some new tires on it. <clears throat> There's another video out there you can take a look at. It does the rear tire. Uh, so first thing we want to do is remove the brake calipers. Um, clearly the last guy who put the caliper on um, didn't use a torque wrench. Yeah, because you see me about throw the bike off of the rear stand just trying to loosen one bolt. My guess would be there's 50 or 60 foot-pounds on that one caliper bolt. Not a good idea. Especially when you're working on somebody's work of art like this. Um, really the right tool for the job should be used. So go ahead and take your calipers off first before you throw it up on the front wheel, the fork stand. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to take the right caliper off first and get it off to the side um, and then we'll move over to the other side. So when you're pulling this caliper, um, give it just a little bit of a twist and that'll separate the brake pads just a smidge so you can get the uh, caliper to slide between the um, rotor and the wheel without scratching it. And I did loosen, I, I don't know why I just got clipped out uh, really fast on the video. I did loosen the axle. Um, I loosened the two pinch bolts on the right side. Loosen the two pinch bolts on the right side only. Only the right side. Loosen. Um, and then loosen your axle. The left side pinch bolts hold the nut. So what you're looking at right now in the fork is the nut that the front wheel axle uh, is fastened to. So you do not need to loosen the pinch bolts on the left side. Uh, and we're, we're back on the caliper. We're removing the caliper bolts. So the first one's out. The bottom one's loose already and we're just going to back it out and get this caliper out of the way. So this is the owner of the bike being helpful. Um, that is a rear swing arm stand. Um, that's what he uses at his house. So he was going to use it here. I'm I'm a huge fan of the uh, fork stand, the front fork stand. I find that it's a lot more stable holding the bike in place. So if you you put it right underneath the caliper mount and the fork. The bike goes up in the air and uh, it's it's there. It's it's on there pretty pretty sturdy, and there's more than enough clearance to get that wheel out. So now we're back over on the right side of the bike, and we're um, removing the front axle. And again, the front axle just screws into the opposite side of the fork. Uh, this is a 27 millimeter wrench that I'm using uh, to pull it out. And it is fine threaded, so it takes a lot of uh, 
It takes a lot of turns to get this axle out of the bike. That's all right, safety first. All right, so here we've got the axle coming out. It's out of the bike. The spacers on these wheels do not come out. Leave the spacers in. So there's the old Pirelli coming out of the bike. And there is the new Bridgestone going into the bike. If you're one of those guys that loves paying all the money for the uh, Pirelli tires, you know, that's fine. Chem China owns Pirelli these days. Um, I use Bridgestone, and we're using um, Lubramatic Marine Grease to lubricate the axle. Remember, uh, we're not lubricating the axle so the wheel spins on the axle. The wheel spins on the sealed wheel bearings inside the hub. Um, we're only lubricating the axle to protect it from dirt, debris, water, grime. And it makes the axle a lot easier to pull out next time when you change tires. Uh, and I use marine grease basically because marine grease if it's good enough to take care of your boat trailer in and out of salt water then it is going to be more than good enough uh, for your axles on your motorcycle to protect them from dirt debris and moisture so we've got our axle with the light coat of grease on it now it's time to put our wheel into place I did get feedback from the owner. He said uh, on the way home, he, he lives about 55 miles from me. Um, he said the way home, he was able to scrub the tires in. There's nothing but twisty roads between his house and mine. So he said he likes the feel of the tires. Um, and like I was saying early on, uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're spending a lot of money on Pirelli tires, these Bridgestones are right at about $300, maybe a little bit more than $300 shipped to your doorstep. Uh, it's worth giving the Bridgestone S22Rs a try. I personally get about 1,500 miles out of a set of Bridgestone S22s. I like the feel of them. Uh, they turn in nice. They've got a good neutral steer to them. Uh, and I'm not giving my money to a foreign country uh, that does not uh, have any respect for the rest of the world. So you should think about that, take that into consideration. Enough of my political views. We are tightening down the axle. Again, this is a 27 millimeter socket and uh, I did not torque the axle down yet. I just got the axle in snug because we're going to use uh, centrifugal force and the braking to align the front end before we torque down the axle. So we're going to manhandle these calipers and get them lined up. Um, the owner said there was blue Loctite on the bolts from the last install, but I didn't find any blue Loctite but there is some kind of glue uh, in the holes of uh, the axle where they mount to the forks uh, so I can't just freely spin the caliper bolts into the bike um, I almost was going to take a thread chaser and put it in there and clean it out but I really would have made this video long <laughs> would have turned this short video into a movie and since I haven't I haven't done a MV Agusta in the last 40 years of changing motorcycle tires I doubt that this one will need another set of tires in the next two or three years it, 
it seems every MV Agusta I see has very, very low miles on it. Um, but they do look good. They look good in the garage, don't they? In front of Starbucks. Beautiful bike. Just beautiful bike. So we've got our caliper installed. We've got the bolts in. Um, we're going to tighten them down hand tight with this small ratchet. And then we're going to get our torque wrench out. And in the majority of my videos, I'm going to say probably at this point 99% of my videos, I do not give torque specs uh, because it was impossible to find torque specs on this bike. I'm going to tell you um, these caliper bolts are 38 to 42 Newton. Um, that translates into about 28 foot pounds. So your caliper bolts are 28 foot pounds for you guys in America. And then you have a little variance if you're in the rest of the world. Um, those caliper bolts are 38 to 42 Newton meters. But don't jump on any of my other videos for any uh, Ducatis, Hondas, Suzukis. Um, you're not going to find torque specs in my videos. Um, they're in the owner's manual. Um, I'm not a, I'm not an owner, and there is no owner's manual on this bike. And when I did go to the interwebs to find out what the torque specs were, all the clowns that own these bikes, their great advice to uh, everyone who asked what the torque specs were was to go look it up in their manual. Um, so, Envy Agusta owners aren't exactly the friendliest bunch of guys, or are they helpful when uh, one of their co-riders is uh, trying to figure out torque specs to put their front wheel on. So I went ahead and I downloaded the manual. It's out there on the interwebs, easy to find. And uh, I got the torque specs and translated them into uh, foot-pounds for you to make your life a little bit easier. So again, here's the caliper. For you guys in the US, this is gonna be 28 foot-pounds. If you remember me taking off the right side, it was probably at about 50 or 60 foot-pounds because it kicked my butt trying to get that other caliper off. And yes, I do click each bolt three times when I'm doing the caliper. All right, so we're done with the caliper. So now we're gonna jump over to the front of the bike. We're gonna spin the wheel. That centrifugal force of the wheel going around and locking down the caliper will tweak the front end and align everything. Then we're going to throw our torque wrench on the front uh, axle and we're gonna torque it down. The torque on that is going to be 44 foot-pounds or 60 to 65 Newton meters. So then we drop our bike once our axles tighten down and then we're going to put a torque on um, the pinch bolts. These pinch bolts, uh, that's a five millimeter hex socket. A trick to doing the pinch bolts, always use an inch pound torque wrench, an inch pound torque wrench. Um, you're, you just do the math so the math on this one is going to be pinch bolt is 15 foot pounds or 20 to 22 newton meters um, so it's just 15 times 12 and whatever number you come up with that's going to be what you put into your inch pound torque wrench um, your inch pound torque wrench because it is a smaller wrench it doesn't allow you to get as much force onto your pinch bolts Therefore, you're saving that pinch bolt from uh, stretching itself out. Uh, I'm sure that whoever's done the bike before me um, has already stretched those out. But there's a nice picture of the bike. Um, thanks for watching my video. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up.